Hi guys, it's Alex Romano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. I feel like I haven't done a review for a really long time. I've just been busy. June is a busy month for me and plus hay fever affects things greatly. So I've tried to kind of wait for a day when I can have a good day, a day when my nose isn't so messed up. Last week, not a good week. So today I'm reviewing Gallop, or Gallop by Hermes. This fragrance came out in 2016 and the perfumer behind it is Christine Nagel. I think it was kind of a turning point for Hermes because their previous main perfumer was Jean-Claude Elena upon research that I've done and they've kind of handed over to her and I think she's now the main perfumer so obviously they have different styles. This one is all centered around horsiness, <laughs> which makes sense because the Hermes logo is a kind of chariot thing or a horse rearing up. I'll have to kind of remember what that is, I can't remember, but I know it's definitely something to do with a horse. The bottle is shaped like a stirrup, so this fragrance is a very simple one, but what's something to note about it is the concentration of it. It is actually an extra, or it says on here, pure perfume, so that's interesting, that normally doesn't happen too much with uh, designer fragrances, so interesting point to make. The notes are really simple, it's quite a simple and effective fragrance. They are rose, saffron, quince and leather. Um, and I need to quickly say thank you to Peter Kokoran who sent me this, amongst other bunches of stuff. It's got loads of different kind of stirrupy things on the back. I think maybe going through time, but um, yeah, the bottle is really interesting. I've never seen it in person, but I've looked at actual photos of it and it's kind of classy and cool. Hi Bo. So what is so what does it smell like, is the question. I've used up this much of this. This is this was quite a big sample. It was a four mil and I've already used almost three, I would say. So it's dry here and wet here. It's, <clears throat> it's interesting. It's kind of slightly unusual, I don't know. The main things you can smell here, pretty much the whole wearing of this is rose and leather. They work in tandem. They complement each other, they balance each other out. The rose kind of softens the leather a bit and the leather darkens the rose a little bit. But in the opening, you have the quince gives it a kind of waxy citrus feeling, if that makes any sense, it's, it's quite strange. But really, the rose and leather are playing this kind of tug of war on your skin when you wear it. So the leather in it I want to say, and it might not make sense to a lot of people, but if you've ever smelled, any of you that are watching The Cobra and the Canary by Imaginary Authors, it reminds me of that. It's the same kind of leatheriness in both. The saffron makes it feel a little bit dry, the rose makes it feel powdery, and the leather makes it feel quite dark. It's not a, um, sorry my phone's ringing, as always when I do, when I press record. Every time. The leather in here, like I said, is soft, but it's not suede -y. It's not that type of leather going on, It's not, but it's also not full-on leather jacket either. It's kind of somewhere in between. Um, and this fragrance isn't one of those ones that is a super projector, but it lasts a really long time. Leather, to me, generally has quite a long-standing thing on your skin in general when it's in fragrance, or the idea of leather in fragrances usually kind of lasts quite long, and it's the same for this. But this isn't a full-on leather jacket, it's not shouty, it's quite a quiet fragrance overall. And like I said, it's, it's quite linear. The, the rose and leather kind of do this dance where sometimes it feels more powdery and rosy, but never really floral, and then sometimes it feels a little bit kind of saddly, like a horse's saddle, which is I think probably what they were going for. Or maybe riding boots even. Just say that for good measure. <laughs> So probably about an hour in, there is a tiny change, but it, I did say that it stays linear, and it does, but towards the end, I do feel like the rose kind of wins the battle, and the rose does lead you on a more rosy, prettier path. I think it's designed for women, but to me, it feels somewhere between unisex and feminine, if I had to say one, or two. It's so really interesting, it's nice to see a pure perfume or an extra come from um, a designer house because it's not too often that that happens and it's really pleasant to wear, it feels kind of classy, I don't know, it feels like you might have been wearing a leather jacket and you took it off and this is the smell that it le it's left on your skin kind of thing and 
I think it's a winner. Um, I don't really review Hermes fragrances that often because I don't really have any, so that's why I was very appreciative of this. In terms of longevity, I get at least 9, 10 hours out of it, sometimes even longer, depending on how much I've sprayed and the weather and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about it. So, if you want to get this fragrance, head on over to natino.co.uk. I'll post a link below. They sell it there. I'm out from my now. Click my logo down there to subscribe if you want to see more videos. And um, I'll see you guys soon for another review. Goodbye. Thank you.